Today, one of my students came to me and said, teacher, can you summarize chapter seven for me? That system life cycle in five minutes. I said, okay, let me quickly explain it for you in five minutes. Number one, system life cycle is comprised of six subtopics, which is analysis, design, uh, development and testing, implementation, then documentation, as well as evaluation. In each one, these are the things you need to know. Analysis. You need to know different ways. Analysis is a way of collecting data. So about the existing system and to know exactly what we need to do in the new system. So if you want to collect data about the existing system, then you can use interview, you can use questionnaire, you can use observation, and you can use looking at existing system or looking at existing paper, reading from existing document. These are the four things you need to know as far as analysis is concerned. Now, Cambridge might ask you a couple of questions here. What are the benefits of using interview instead of questionnaire? What are the advantages and drawbacks of using observation instead of reading from existing document? So in your textbook, you can actually study this. No more, no less. That's all what you need to know as far as analysis. Let's move to design. In design, all what you need to know here are what are the things we normally do in design. And one of them is form, form design, then validation design, then validation routine and the likes. You don't need to know their definition. Just know all these three or four things that I just mentioned now. Now, then in development and testing, the first thing you need to know here is, number one, uh, what are the ways we normally use to test a system? One, uh, uh, systems are developed in modules, which means part by part. So when you finish developing any system, you need to test it in module, module by module. If the module works correctly, then you can join all the systems together, all the modules together. Then you, te you test them again. If they work correctly, then it means the system actually uh, works fine. But if they don't work correctly, then definitely you need to. Um, you reprogram the module and you combine them again and you test again. That's how. No more, no less. Now, what about the, uh, for the testing, you need to know about uh, what we call normal, abnormal, then extreme as, as well as live data. Now, for the normal. So normal data, these are the data within the boundary. The data within the boundary. Let's say in my, in my class of grade eight, I'm teaching this, uh, grade nine, I'm teaching the student, the youngest student is 13, the older student is 16. So the normal data is anything between 13 to 16. Maybe 13, 14, 15, 16, all those ones, they are normal data. Now, what about abnormal data? Abnormal data are the data outside the, um, you, you know, so they are the data outside acceptable limits, outside the boundary. For example, any student, uh, any 12 is abnormal data. 17, 18, 19, they are abnormal data. Because in my class, the age of the students is within 13 to 16. Anything that is not within 13 to 16 is abnormal. All right. Then for extreme, extreme is the data at the limit of acceptability, at the limit of acceptability, at the boundary of acceptability. Example here, that's the lowest at the highest. The, lo the lowest number here is what? It's 13, while the highest number is 16. So the extreme data here are 16, are 13 and 16. Live data, these are the data that you've already know the outcome. Now let's quickly move to implementation. You see, uh, implementation, it has, uh, when you finish developing the system, so the next question is, how are we going to use this system? Then you need to introduce the implementation. And we have four different ways of introducing an implementation. Number one is direct changeover, which means the old system, you will not use it again and you introduce the new system immediately. The second one is parallel, in which you are using the old system as well as the new system at the same time. So the third one is uh, pilot, in which, um, let's say you have different branches and you can say the new system will be used in this branch, while the old system will be used in another branch. If the New system works very well in this branch, then you can introduce it to another branch. If it works well, then you introduce it to another branch. You continue doing like that until you get, uh, 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 you know, until all the branches get the new system. And the last one is phased. So the phased implementation is when you introduce the system part by part, phased, face by face, small, small. So, you know, let's say you have a, a school system which talks about, or which has uh, student management, parent management, staff management. In this system, you can introduce parent management first. Let's see. If it works well, then you will introduce student management as well. If it works well, then it means you are introducing the whole, the new system part by part. So you see, these are the four things you need to know as far as implementation is concerned. Number one, uh, direct changeover implementation. Number two, parallel implementation. Number three, pilot implementation. And number four is phased implementation. Now, Cambridge will surely ask you what are the differences between them? What is the benefit of using direct changeover instead of parallel? Then what's the benefit of using pilot instead of phased? So uh, what's the benefit of using benefit and drawbacks of using pilot instead of, um, let's say, parallel or direct changeover? So you need to be aware of all these things. Then number five is documentation. After you, after, you know, analysis, design, development and testing, implementation, if everything is okay, then you need to have the documentation. Documentation means you need to write down something for the company that, okay, um, and we have to, we have user documentation and we have technical documentation for technical documentation it means you as a programmer you need to write some details how do you dis develop the system let's say you die or something happened to you or you are not working with the company any longer how do you want that company to modify the system you just create for them in future definitely you need to give them some information i use this kind of programming language and this is the reason why i do this this is the reason why i do that you need to give them 
a kind of documentation. That's what we call technical documentation. And what are the things we normally have under the technical documentation? We have the system requirement, you know, the software requirement, hardware requirement, then what kind of programming uh, language do you use and some other things like that. Now, for the user documentation, the second one, the user documentation, this is where you explain how the user will use the system. All right. So, and we normally have something like FAQ, something like uh, troubleshooting, you know, troubleshooting and some other things like that. Now, the last one is evaluation. Evaluation is you ask the user to use the system and they give you some information or they give you some updates about how the system looks like. So that's what we call evaluation. So don't forget all these six. Number one, analysis, design, development and testing, implementation, documentation and evaluation. This is chapter seven. No more, no less. So I forget, I'm not sure if this video is actually longer, five, longer than five minutes, by the way. But this is the, you know, um, the best I can do. So to help you understand system life cycle. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Adobe Dynamic Solution. So uh, I will keep making some videos for you, at least for chapter six, chapter five, chapter one, like that. So that's, you know, just watching this video, I'm pretty sure you can get a very high mark in your exam. So thank you for watching. So share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe as well. Bye.